What's up guys, Headphones Dean here, back with another uh, game review, and in this case it's going to be the uh, 20, and I actually didn't look it up, the old early 2000s game, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. So this game I'm reviewing is was recently released for Android and iOS, so I jumped on the chance to replay the game to see how it holds up, see if my thoughts and feelings changed about it since originally playing the game and I want to say that in some respects it has some of my thoughts have changed and in other respects they have not so as a bit of background I did play the game originally when it came out and I thought it was okay it was a decent enough sequel but um the idea of the Sith Lords and because of Jedi um order is in shambles because of the Jedi Civil War and the Mandalorian Wars worked out and then the Sith Lord is coming into play to uh, um, as a result of the events on Malachor 5 worked out so the premise was all fine but the game felt very incomplete and not necessarily rushed but you could tell that there there were storylines at the time that stood out that were incomplete um, notably um, the planet with the HK-47 um, knockoffs so um, there was supposed to be a planet called um, M378 or M470, something like that, where um, you find that the Jedi Master that was staying, that was hiding out on Korriban learns that there's something going on on that droid planet, so ends up going there. And um, as far as the rest of the storyline, as far as Darth Sion finding her and killing her there, is I couldn't find a um, definite answer on what that part was all about, but... At some point, she was supposed to make it to that other planet, and that's where the player ends up going as a means of meeting up with her and learning something from her. But I guess because the game was rushed, instead of finding just a data patch, the player finds her killed because of the actions of Darth Sion. So, I mean, at the time, I, I was kind of bummed that we, or that part of the storyline was okay. They wrapped it up nicely enough, but it was. The game felt incomplete because compared to Knights of the Old Republic 1, there was one less planet to visit, so the game felt that much faster. So there was a, having less to do in a game as a sequel was kind of a bummer. And then um, having various parts of the games like when you're on um, you're uh, you're on um, Duxin, I believe it was, and you're in the hidden military base. There's a part where they have a door that you, um, that's locked, but then um, I guess for some reason you're not allowed to go through it, but they have the overlying text that um, you can't access it. So things like that are randomly throughout the game. So you could tell that there were bits and pieces of levels that they didn't have a chance to finish. So instead of um, taking them out, it was just they put, they put things like... The, um, that overlay message that you can't get through it and then things like the Jedi Master on Korriban all of that kind of fell into play that you could tell that there's pieces missing in the game uh, when you get to um, the actual gameplay of it and the overall stories and the character interactions that's one thing they kept going overall very well so um, that I actually did like so you could still um, talk to your various characters, uh, progress their storylines, learn more about them. And the one feature that they did add that I liked was that you could turn various teammates into um, Jedi or for basically Jedi or Sith, depending on your alignment. But you could turn them into Force users. So um, I did like that. So if you have enough influence with them, then and you progress down their storylines far enough, then you can do so. So if you play as a canon female character in the game, then you can pick up characters like the Disciple and and convert him to a Jedi. You can convert um, Atten if you talk to him enough um, as a female character. I don't remember if in my original gameplay if I converted... I think I have a memory that I converted Atten, Beodur, and the Dis... Or actually, I didn't convert the Disciple, but I did convert Atten and Beodur to Jedi. Um, this time around, I was able to convert Atten and the Disciple, but not Beodur, because I don't think I used them as much as I did before, so um, there was a little bit of that going on. So um, it all depends on how much you talk to your characters at the end of the day and how much you use them. So I think this time around, I did use the Disciple and Atten quite a bit more than I did in the past. Um, in the past, I did use Atten when needed. 
or I think I used Adden only to convert him to a Jedi, and the Disciple to, or sorry, the um, Beodor, so I could convert him to a Jedi. And I think I played um, the non-canon male side of the role. So I, as when I picked up the Exile, or sorry, the Handmaiden from Atrus's um, Hidden Academy, then I was able to also convert her to a Jedi. So. Um, you can, I, I want to say ideally you could convert all of your or all, those four characters to a Jedi all at the same time, but I don't remember if I was able to do that at some point at, or all at once. But um, that's neither here nor there. That's the one thing that I did like in the game, and then we do get, um, or the other part of the game that I did like is that we did get to visit new planets like Narshada, Andron, and Duxin. So. Um, that was a good part, and the part that felt kind of repetitive but worked in the scope of the game was um, revisiting Korriban and seeing the um, uh, destroyed um, Sith Academy, and then visiting Dantooine and visiting the ruined Jedi Enclave. So, all in all, those two planets worked, even though they were repurposed from the first, or, yeah, repurposed from the first game. You couldn't, you can't visit the um, tombs of the Sith Lords on Korriban, but that would have taken away from the game but it did also make um the sith academy and the shirak caves a little bit of a, a quicker planet than most so that's the other kind of bummer that i felt like they kind of or korriban was only meant so that you could visit um i think i want to say her lord name is lorna vash maybe but the the jedi master hiding on korriban so by not having her on Korriban, it felt like the planet itself was a wasted planet um, insofar as since you can't, or, or now I'm reading as I um, give my review, once you finish Korriban, um, the droid planet was supposed to show up so that you could um, go to that droid planet and find um, that Jedi Master, but because she's dead, Korriban is a pretty quick planet, so you finish this uh, Sith Academy and you find Darsion waiting for you, you're unable to beat him as part of the gameplay so that you can fight him later, and then you end up going to um, the Shirak Caves to um, travel among there, and then you can get some more backstory as far as your character and um, how she ended up joining the um, Mandalorian Wars and following Darth Revan and Darth Malak. So that was okay. That worked out. I mean, but it wasn't really, there wasn't very much there for plot progression. Um, granted, if you go to Korriban and you get to the, I mean, the all of it is okay if you end up going to the droid planet. So... Um, or if the droid planet was there, but in my opinion, instead of having Korriban, if they had just put in the droid planet and you go there, meet with a Jedi Master, and that's where you end up picking up, or that's where you learn about joining the Mandalorian Wars, and that's where you also learn about um, how you picked up HK-47, that would have worked out better for me. The whole Dantooine story arc was fine, um, because you do go and... Um, you find the Jedi Master there, you're uh, revitalizing the trade route, you're um, uh, going to the Jedi Enclave to find out what's going on there to pick originally to pick up the Disciple, and then after that you have all the Jedi meeting up there to um, tell you the rest of your backstory and why they exiled you. And of course, the second part, or the other part that I liked about the game is that you get a new force power in that if you're on the light side, you get a power called force enlightenment. So it um, allows you to enable your th the, or three of your force powers um, all at the same time. So I believe, so I was reading that it was potentially just your three highest force powers, but then on the other side, it um, activates your force speed, force. Um, barrier and force armor at the same time regardless of um, what the level of those is so as a light side user um, that gives you a good amount of quick protection and activates force speed so you can run around easily rather than having to do those three separately uh, you do still have to use the rest of, or activate the rest of your power separately but having instead of having to do three powers at one or three powers separately you can do one power all at the same time so that works out 
nicely. Um, I don't remember having received the dark side version of that. I think it's like force kill or force choke or something along those lines. Or, um, something, not force choke, but something along those lines where it activates your three dark side powers. So, um, my plan is to actually replay the game as a dark side and maximize my the dark side power so for example when you see the gameplay videos on the light side you'll see that i did maximize you know force heal um barrier armor speed uh meditation and all that so uh, previously i think i um tried to go for a multitude of powers and um i think i got it might have gotten to improved um force powers rather than master force powers so this time I decided to go for mastering all the force powers and um, pa- and bulking up on the various ways to activate those four on my force power points so that I could get those extra powers and I found that the game was a lot easier and quicker by doing so so I'm planning on doing the same thing on the dark side and uh, maximizing all those uh, all my dark side powers to see how the gameplay goes by doing that and also continuing to uh, maximize my treat injury so I can see if um, the force drain it works just as well as force heal by doing that so um, that's but that's neither here nor there as far as the rest of the game goes that's really all there is to say about it I mean um, the game felt relatively easy in my playthrough this time mostly because I did bulk up on the various force powers and I did start off by um, using or by getting force speed or force run just because going or moving around the game at normal speed is kind of annoying and makes the game last a lot longer than it needs to be but using force run it makes it easier to get around various parts of the level cutscenes still will show up when at their pre-programmed places so it's not like you're going to not get the cutscene so if I were to recommend anything on whether you're playing light side or dark side or in the middle I would recommend um, you getting starting off with force run because for example the initial level on the Paragus mining facility while it's an okay level I find it I still find it kind of annoying so um, if you when you, in order to get through it more quickly, I would recommend using Force Run so that you can get through it a, a little. I mean, it's not the fastest Force Run, but that way at least you can get through it a little bit more quickly so that you can move on to the rest of the game. Um, and from there, otherwise, the game is. I still want to say the game is okay. I initially I was kind of bummed with the game just because for me, when you take out a planet and there's it feels like there's items missing and then going around the different planets and all of that I mean it felt okay and it felt like it was a rush game but this time around it felt okay the storylines were good enough Um, they still kept enough of the original game to make it worthwhile but for me the thing that takes away points is that when you have a planet like Korriban and you're missing a Jedi Master just so that you could uh, finish the game quickly that kind of turns me off to the game so if I were to grade the game now I would give it around a B to a B plus originally I probably would have given it a C just because yeah it's, it's a Star Wars game but on the flip side it's incomplete so why grade it anything positive but for me now I mean with they because you can start the game now with gaining force powers um, they add force and enlightenment you can convert your various players to um, into becoming Force users, whether Jedi or Sith, generally just works for me. So, um, I def I would now I would recommend the game, but with a grain of salt that it is incomplete. So, I'm not going to say that it's the greatest ga- Star Wars game in the world, but it's not as bad as I remember it. So, overall, as I mentioned, I give it a grade of a B. So, not definitely worth playing. But if you're coming off of playing the first Knights of the Old Republic, then definitely play this for completionist sake even though a lot of it might not be canon but it is a star wars game and i did like the improved force features that you could use in this game or that you get in the game like force enlightenment but you can force enlightenment but then also your character can gain the power of battle meditation which you could not do in the first game so you can get you do start with uh, battle meditation then improved battle meditation and then master battle meditation so overall or that's the other thing that i liked in order to gain um various skill points on your character and take away points from the other characters or other um 
people in the game that you're fighting against. So that's all there is for this particular review. So in the show notes, I will have a link to the playlist so you guys can check out the full gameplay. Um, they did say that a game takes about 30 to 40 hours or something like that. And um, in doing a rough count of my gameplay videos, that's about as long as it took. So they are spot on. Um, and so if you just want to see a, a full playthrough of the game, it is... Um, as of this recording, the entire game is up on uh, YouTube, so you can check it out. And as I mentioned, the uh, playlist is in the show notes. Um, but that's all for this particular review. So if you want to get in touch with me, provide your feedback, commentary, and all of that, then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. And as I mentioned, I'll be replaying the, or I plan to replay the game and focus on the dark side. So if you have any feedback or commentary or questions of your own, by the time I finish playing that game, you can... Uh, find me on Twitter, as I mentioned, at PatelN01. Um, comment on one of the videos on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash PatelN01. And of course, the website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.